All right, what's going on you guys? Today I'm gonna to show you not only what makes good ads, but what actually makes a winning product. Now, before we get into that, I just wanna show you my store right now. As you can see, I'm getting lots of sales coming through here. The store is doing quite well right now. So we've got sales coming through all across the entire country. And as you can see right here, this is the total sales for the day so far. I'm just gonna refresh it real quick, just so you can see that this is in fact real. Got lots of sales coming through. And I just wanna show you guys this just so that you can see that this is in fact real and you can trust the advice that I'm about to give you in this video. All right, so before we begin, real quick, check this out. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I just got this new tattoo, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's a little barcode on the wrist. It's pretty cool because it kind of stands for something that's awesome. It pretty much means that what's already been bought can't be sold, so I'm pretty fired up about that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you some ads and some products and after I show you them, I'm gonna tell you if it actually is a good ad, a bad ad, or if it's a good product or a bad product, and we'll see if you get it right. So let's go ahead and let's start off with this one right here. So this right here is the thumbnail of the product. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. And imagine you didn't see that thumbnail. Now, as we watch this ad, we're like, all right, right off the bat, look at that. They're showing the product, it's exciting. There's a lot going on. You're seeing all the different things to do with the product coming into play. It's, it's just all around got a lot of color. There's a lot of different things happening. Now, this ad was exceptional. <laughs> I'm kidding. You absolute donkey if you think that this was a great ad. This was a horrible ad. Now, major reason why this was a horrible ad is because it has absolutely no context to the product. If you wouldn't have seen this thumbnail right here, you would have had no idea what product was actually being advertised. As we see, they show the product at the beginning, but then they go ahead and they throw this little thing in there. And suddenly it's like, okay, is the ad for these little sock slip things or is it for this little stretch band? What the heck is this ad actually for? And it's not until we're almost like 12 seconds in that you kind of get an idea that, okay, this ad is actually for these socks. So this ad right here, Big X, big no, and also a horrible product, bad idea, it's hideous. This is a hideous product, and even though it's a functional product, functional products still have to have some sort of aesthetic to them, or they just won't sell. Next ad we're gonna check out here, and after we go through these ads, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna explain my ad structure breakdown, and then I'm also gonna explain my product structure breakdown. So you're not only gonna see everything, you're also gonna get my exact template for what I'm looking for in a good ad and a good product. So let's check this one out. If we watch this super, oh, sorry, this was screen recorded. So if we watch this super high quality ad, you can see lots going on here. It's really clearly demonstrating the product. Look at the crisp quality and look at how they get into what the product does right away. And then they go ahead and they go through the demonstration again and again and again. So right off the bat, it's like, look how convenient this is. It catches you and you're like, all right, maybe I could use this product. Maybe it's something that I could actually use within my life. They demonstrate the product in such a good way while also showing you how easy it is to use. And then they go ahead and they repeat that multiple times. So it's kind of like instilling in you just how well this works. It's not something that might work once. It's not something that might work twice. It's something that works really well, nonstop, all the time. So great ad, great product. Next, we're gonna take a look at this one right here. So as we watch this right off the bat, can you tell what's wrong? <laughs> can you tell what's wrong with this ad? Ad bands, major, major ad bands. Not only is there way, way too much false advertising going on here, there's also way too much cleavage and nudity and all that kind of stuff going on here, which on any advertising platform, you're gonna get banned right away. And if you don't get banned right away, you're gonna have a lot of angry customers because this is advertising a product that can grow your boobs. Like, absolutely ridiculous. And beyond that, this ad is just craziness. This is something that just looks like a scam. It's got so much going on. I will give it to them. They do give, they do, do a good example of before and after, but it just so happens that the before and after is like a girl growing her boobs within, I'm sure they're making some crazy claim like 10 days or something like that. So horrible ad, 
horrible product. It's a horrible ad because the ad itself is just going to get you banned. And the product itself is false advertising, which you never want to play around with when it comes to running products. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. This is actually a cool product. I recommend when you go out and test this one out. I think it's super cool. Does it work? I'm not entirely sure. The theory of how it works is there. So as you can see, um, this is kind of like a red light therapy scalp massager. So it's supposed to help with hair growth and just better blood circulation. That's what red light does. It gives you better blood circulation uh, and you can put your massage oils in there. Now, this product is a really cool product because it solves a problem. It has mass appeal and it's something that's easy to use. And as you can see, what makes it really, really good is the products easy to advertise with. Because if we look at this right off the bat, what's happening here? Oil your hair with me. There's actually a lot of girls out there that oil their hair. A lot of guys actually too. So when you see this right there, you're thinking, oil your hair with me, what the heck does that mean? I typically oil my hair by just applying it to my hand and rubbing it into my scalp. What the heck is this girl doing with her head? What's going on up here? So it creates a sense of kind of interest. And then right after they create that interest, they show the product, they demonstrate how you use it, and then boom, they get right back in to using the product. So they don't take too long demonstrating how to put the oils in. They just show you the product features. It's got the red light. It's got the massage tips. It can be put in water. And then they show you it being used. So live application, which is an exceptional way of demonstrating a solution product where you use live application because when it comes to a lot of these products that solve a problem, a lot of people have issues with them because they don't actually work the way that they're intended or they're much harder to use than they should be. So they're demonstrating just how easy this is to use, they're demonstrating how convenient it is, and they're demonstrating how it creates a better solution to a problem that already exists. All right, so now that you understand what a good ad, a bad ad, a good product, a bad product all look like, and go back and look at those if you need to get a refresher because they're bad. Some of them are bad. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at these. So we have ad structure and we have winning products. What makes a good ad structure and what makes a good product? So with an ad structure, what makes a good ad structure is you wanna start off with a big fat hook. So this big fat hook right here is what's gonna draw the viewer in. Now this hook can be a couple different things. It depends on your product. So your hook can be something where it's presenting a problem, and then after that you would present the solution. Or if it's not a problem solution product, your hook can be something more in lines of like, just kind of crazy eye-catching content. So eye-catching content. So that's gonna be your hook. That's the general sense of what a hook is. It's very simple, but when done right, you're gonna notice massive success because the hook is designed to draw your viewer in and get them on to the next stage of the video. If they don't get to the next stage, your hook is not that good. That's the basic truth of it all. So the next stage of your content, if you're doing a problem solution product, of course the next stage for that one is gonna be the solution. If it happens to be a eye-catching content, so let's say you're selling something like pants or you're selling something like a bag, like it's something that doesn't have a problem solution, the next thing that you wanna do from eye-catching content is you wanna do a demonstration of the product. This is a great way of incorporating lifestyle imagery into your content. Make the viewer imagine what it would be like if they had that product, because it's something where the emotional factor of them getting that product is how they're gonna feel when they have it, when they're wearing it, when they're using it, whatever it is. Whereas with a problem solution, the emotional component is how are they gonna feel when they have the solution to their problem? So you wanna always present something at the beginning that draws them in, and then you wanna present why they were drawn in by demonstrating it through a lot of lifestyle content. After you do that demonstration through lifestyle content, you're gonna to wanna to sprinkle a small section of product features. Now this can be done with both um, problem solution products or it can also be done with just general awesome products that people would want. You still wanna demonstrate product features, but when I say sprinkle in a small section, it really is a small section. Highlight them fast, boom, 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 and then move on. And then after we've highlighted those, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the solutions 
or the demonstration of the products. So just like what those other people did when they were going through and demonstrating that phone holder. They showed the product, they showed the features, and then they went back into the demonstration of the product. That product was not only an eye-catching product, so a product that people would just want, it was also a problem solution product. And that's why that product has such good mass appeal because it hits on two key factors of what makes a winning product. So now that you have the basic structure, you got your hook, you got your middle, you got the features, and you got your end, next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're running an ad like this with an actual good product because that's another huge reason why so many people fail. So what makes a good product? It has to have one of these two. It has to be a product that can be demonstrated in an eye-catching way, or it has to be a product that solves a problem. If it's neither of these, you have to have massive brand awareness because no one's gonna give a crap about your product or your ad. You have to have one of those two. So eye-catching content or a problem product. The next thing that makes a winning product is why would someone want it? When you're looking at a product, actually ask yourself, why the hell would anyone want this piece of crap? Typically, you're gonna come back and you're gonna realize, oh, they don't, it's a piece of crap. So don't sell it. Only sell stuff that's good, that solves a great problem, or creates a sense of desire. So when we look at different products, problem solution products, a bad example is that one where the solution to a problem, it is a problem, let's be honest, but the solution is a complete scam, it's a lie horrible product. But if we have a problem solution product where the solution actually works, it's a great product. When it comes to eye-catching content, this can be anything. Like anything that has some sort of emotional desire, you can create eye-catching content from. A couple different types of products as well are all of these right here. So we have number one, multi-order products. These ones are great, and what that means is a customer will most likely buy more than one of them when they come through your checkout. This makes the product so much better because your average order value is gonna be way higher, meaning you can spend way more on ads compared to anyone else competing for those same audiences. The second one here is return customer products. These are products that are typically consumables and the customer will most likely be coming back to your store to buy that product again, increasing the lifetime value of that customer. Next one is seasonal and gift products. So these are ones that are specific. So like for Valentine's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, any holiday, if you can find a product that taps into that holiday and you can market it properly, it can be a great product. Of course, keep in mind, it does have a shorter life cycle. The next one is do-it-yourself products. I've made millions of dollars off do-it-yourself products. What kind of products are these? These are the ones where when someone's walking around their house and they see something inside the house, like a baseboard that's off a little bit, or a fridge that they need to move, or some crap like that. Something where people have something inside their house or inside their car or whatever the heck it is, where it's nagging them. It's constantly saying like, fix me, fix me, like figure this out. You present the product, you're like, hey, you got that crap that you need to get fixed inside your house or your car. Here's a product that you can use to do it yourself. Wow sell a ton of those. It's absolutely crazy because people will buy that, they'll recommend it to their friends, and they'll also buy it for other people. They'll be like, oh, I know you had that thing you were trying to do, so I bought you this so that it could help you do it yourself. Crazy, absolutely crazy. I love those type of products. Trending products are the next one. These ones, you really have to make sure that you're catching them when the trend is hot. If not, there's absolutely no point. It most likely won't sell because it actually was probably not a great product or it just wasn't a product that actually appeased that many people. The only reason why it was selling really well is because it was trending. So people wanted to get on that trend like a bunch of FOMO crazy people and you just happen to be there to supply the product. So trending products are the next great ones. Always keep in mind when you're going and you're selling products, do not run ads like this. Instead, what you wanna do is you wanna run great ads and you wanna run great products. This right here is crap, this will waste your money, and these type of products will only make customers angry. I really hope this video helped you all out. If it did, go ahead, subscribe to the channel and like the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.